Okay, it is seven o'clock. Thank you all out there for joining us this evening. Uh, we're going to be going over the uh, um, Semiang Residents Association uh, Restricted Reserve Budget and the Reserve Study this evening. And uh, I think before we get started, Doug, did you want to say a few things? Yeah, I'd just uh, like to thank everyone again for participating in the Zoom presentation tonight. Um, as I mentioned Saturday, the budget's product of the contribution of a lot of people who've been actively involved in the community. They've got hands-on involvement from committee members, outside professionals, uh, staff, past and current board members, all of whom have firsthand involvement and clear perspectives on the challenges facing our community. It's my hope tonight, and between now and the Tuesday the 13th, that you will provide us with constructive input on your thoughts about the budget. Are there details that should be illuminated, decreased, eliminated, increased? Did we leave anything out that should be added? This is what we're looking for. That's what town halls are for. We're not Congress, we're your neighbors. It's, it just happens we're volunteers to help provide direction for our management team. Budgets for communities like ours are best guess approximations as to where we will focus our energy and our resources. Things can happen that change what needs our attention throughout the year. A good example is the storms last November. Boundary Ridge flooded, recreation easements was wiped out. We had bioswell damage. It's important to remember that as, as clear as we try to prognosticate where we're gonna have to use our resources and spend our energy, that can change. So let's, let's try to be neighbors. Let's try to make sure we focus on making sure we have a budget that works for us all as best as we can. Your board is working here hard to try and make sure we do that for you all. So let's make this valuable. Um, let's make it productive. And with that, David, let's dive in. Okay. Over the agenda, um, we're gonna revisit just quickly the board mission and vision. Uh, we're gonna review the 2022 reserve study. We're gonna review the 2023 reserve budget assessments. And we're gonna take some comments and questions at the end. Um, we had mentioned at the last meeting because it was on a Saturday um, in the afternoon, we did have about 50 people join that uh, we would take some questions at the end of this meeting. Um, for those that may have watched the uh, video uh, and over the weekend, uh, but the first uh, part of the question and answer we're gonna devote to the reserve study and then the second half we're gonna do to the operating budget. Um, it is 7 p.m. and so we recognize that we don't want this to go too long. Um, we'd like to try to wrap it up you know, by nine o'clock and uh, so that's not to limit people's ability to speak or to comment. I just want to say that uh, uh, I will be available to answer any questions, especially detail. Um, if you want source documents, we'll, we'll make those available. So this is not, uh, if, if it, it goes to nine o'clock and you still have questions, we can get those answered for you. And just wanted to make mention as well, um, just circumstances, uh, tomorrow's the first day of school. We had, uh, Justine was going to be here. She was not able to make it. And so I don't really have any help on the admin side. And so I'm trying to run this, um, this meeting on my own. Um, we don't have the chat enabled right now. Um, we're probably not going to do that this evening. I would just ask that people raise their hands. It's really difficult to try and and run the meeting and then try to both do chat and, uh, and and answer questions and look at hands being raised. It's just a little bit too much for one individual to accomplish. So um, please just try to find your um, your reaction button on your, uh, your Zoom uh, console and then just raise your hand when we get to the question and answer session. So then again, we will adjourn hopefully right about nine o'clock. So going through the schedule, a budget schedule, we had that meeting on the 27th. Um, like I said, about 50 people attended, it seemed to go very well. Um, August 30th, again, that's right now, it's tonight's meeting. 
then we also promise to have one on September 13th at 6 p.m. And that'll be a review of both the reserve and the operating budget. And also, if we get comments back and we get um, uh, concerns from the members um, about the budget that's been proposed, both the operating and the, um, uh, and the reserve budgets, that the board can take that under advisement and then that may be affect the, the final budget that gets put into the packet, which will be September 21st, the board has to adopt the budget. So that September, between this meeting, that September 13th meeting, the 21st is really the opportunity for the community to affect changes to the budget. And um, I have not heard anything, I haven't gotten any emails from anybody about uh, Saturday's presentation. So uh, hopefully we'll, we'll hear some comments from the membership. And then October 29th, uh, the AGM, that's when the members vote on the budget and hopefully ratify it. So just quickly, just to sort of set the table, um, you know, what we're, what, why we're here, um, what I think the right, overarching theme of everything that we're doing, just you can't lose um, sight of the vision statement. And that is, we're gonna try to make Semiyama, the premier residential resort community in the Pacific Northwest. Um, I think with the setting is there, we just have some things that we need to work on. Uh, mission statement set by the SRE board in 2022, enhance and preserve the natural beauty, harmonious design, quality of life, and sense of community in Semiyama. We're gonna accomplish that by maintaining our assets. That's what this meeting's about. Uh, safety and beauty, durability, environmental compliance, communicating regularly and openly, managing funds in a responsible and sustainable manner. Again, that's another bullet point for this evening. Enforcing our rules, procedures, and covenants, and planning for the future with strategic initiatives and capital improvements. Again, another bullet point that is uh, going to be addressed tonight. So just to go over some of the things that we have accomplished and and know that we'll accomplish by the end of the year. We did strengthen our maintenance team by adding a, a very motivating, experienced maintenance director and also high-level maintenance journeyman and uh, Leroy Dougal. Uh, the two of them have been able to accomplish some um, pretty amazing things this year. Um, and some of those uh, on this list we have accomplished and others we are right in the middle of. Uh, the Drayton Hill, Hillside Bioswell, uh, Leroy and Dan are working on that now and Mike. Um, refurbished uh, two gates should have three done before the end of the year. Uh, we'll be replacing the entry signs. Those are going to be showing up, uh, eight entry signs. Um, 22 of the gates were brought up to safety standard. Uh, I think we have 26 for 27. So many of those gates, I mean, most of the gates had um, functional um, issues as far as safety. So you can go on and on um, on this list. And, and this is going to be posted again. Once I get uh, done with the presentation, I'll make this into a PDF. I'll put that on the, on the website. I was working on it all the way up to just a few hours ago today. So um, how we prepared the reserve budget. Um, it all started with trying to put together a reserve study. And the director of maintenance, the maintenance committee, uh, created a comprehensive 30-year capital asset maintenance improvement plan. Um, very, very comprehensive, excellent work done by uh, everyone involved there. Uh, with that work, we commissioned a new reserve study. This is an outside um, third-party subject matter expert. Um, they're certified reserve analysts. We have to have that done as far as uh, state uh, RCWs are concerned. So, but we have to provide Community Association has to provide the inputs to that reserve analyst. So we did that. Um, this went through uh, the Finance Committee and then the, a board group also a couple of times. Um, multiple iterations going back and forth with the reserve analysts, changing assumptions on uh, interest rates and many of the other things that are, excuse me, uh, inflation rates. Uh, and, and so it was a, a continual effort through the month of June and July. And then a final draft was delivered to uh, the board at their August 24th meeting. So what is a reserve study? I think this is important. It seems um, maybe many of you might know uh, on the call, but um, I think it's a, a, a definition and, and some distinctions here are worth uh, spending a little bit of time on. For one, a reserve study, it's required by the state. It's required by state law that you have a reserve study done. 
it is in essence a disclosure document as well um, between not not just to the members here in shelter bridge and semi Alma, but also to any buyers that may be coming in thinking about purchasing property here they can look at that reserve study and try to determine whether or not they're buying you know, an asset or a liability. And that's really one of the reasons why the state set a reserve study up and it's mandatory for all community associations and condominiums. And it's also a multi-year planning tool. So it serves a number of purposes. This is a definition directly out of um, Wikipedia. And I thought it, it deserved a little bit of time as well. A reserve study is a long-term capital budget planning tool, which identifies current status of the reserve fund. So that's important. What that says is it determines what the money is that you have in the bank, not just what your assessments are, but what, what are your reserves and a stable and equitable funding plan to offset ongoing deterioration or your depreciation. And that stable and equitable part, again, it is that you're not having special assessments. You're not going up and down with this funding in your assessment. And the equitable, again, is between buyers and sellers. Um, to make sure that when a property, the common areas of a, an HOA are properly maintained so that the person that's coming in doesn't get a special assessment as a surprise, you know, for the first year that they're in the association that they belong to. So resulting in sufficient funds, those anticipated major common expenditures and when they occur. And the other thing that, about a reserve study the most important thing really is it sets the assessment level. It tells you over 30 years of this up and down in spending that happens in reserve budgets because they're, they're, they're different than an operating plan. Operating plans are pretty steady state, uh, but you can have wild swings in, in expenditures in your reserve budget from one year to, to another. And so the, it, this is important for looking out for 30 years to make sure that in year 15 or so, you're not going to the bank or having a special assessment because you don't have enough money to fund maybe a number of projects that pile into one year. So really, again, a reserve study is to set the assessment. That's probably one of its most important functions. What a reserve study is not is a detailed project list by year. It's not a capital facilities plan that's going to tell us exactly what we're going to spend the money on. What it does is it models those expenditures over 30 years. And then it helps you set that assessment. So for instance, you might say, well, you know, we're going to spend $20,000 a year on drainage issues. Well, not every year is going to be 20,000. You just need to make sure you have that money piling up through the years so that you can, you can hit those years where maybe it's a hundred thousand and the next year it's zero. The other thing about a reserve study is it is a living document. Um, it's going to be different each year. You could ask, well, how come this is different than the one we did in 2020? Why do we have to have another one? Because they do change. A lot of things change um, as far as the cost of, uh, of components or um, uh, a component list. You have things that you add, things that you get rid of, um, and then things like inflation change. So it's just something that happens every year and ups, it's updated. So with that, um, we, what we set out to accomplish was we wanted to make sure that the restricted reserve uh, fund was fully funded and that it would be able to, to handle any long-term capital um, asset maintenance and improvement plans that we had. Uh, we understood that we were going to front load this, that we were going to try to get a lot of this work done uh, in the first five years in this plan uh, and then sort of reach a steady state. And we're going to fully investigate unbudgeted financial threats, including the Boundary Ridge stormwater drainage situation, Drayton Harbor bioswale access issues, and the, likely the uh, Drayton Harbor recreational easement. So these are some of the overarching objectives that we had going into this planning process. And what we found during that period of investigation um, was that, and probably not to many people on the call's surprise, we have some aging infrastructure, gates, signs, pavement, drainage systems, and they all need attention. There's been deferred maintenance, and we need to address that. Well, one of the things that we saw, especially in the reserve study, was and it affected the change between 2020 and 22 the most were the following factors. And these are compounding. 
we had a component list that was not fully developed or populated. So what we're listing increased. The unit cost was understated um, and pavement in, in particular, which is a pretty good chunk of the reserve study. You know, whether that's uh, $12 a square yard or if it's 20, whatever it is, you have to get that unit cost correct. And, and we did a good job this year in getting that unit cost correct and, and, and accurate, I believe. The replacement cycle too, how often do you, do you change uh, signs or um, gate controllers? Um, th that's one of the things that changed in between 2020 and 2022 as well. There was just a, a tightening of that cycle. So when you look at all of that and you say, okay, well, we have more components, we have higher costs of the of per unit costs and we have a tighter replacement uh, cycle. What that leads to is inadequate assessments and reserve fund to fund the long-term capital spending plan. So what does it look like in aggregate dollars? In 2020, the uh, reserve study shows um, almost $5 million in spending. And in 2022, in that reserve study, two years later, you see a total over 30 years of almost 12 million. So you have, again, all, all of those components that we were discussing in, con in Congress together um, acting in, to increase these costs. And you also have inflation. I think everybody out there realizes that we're in a, an inflationary period that we haven't seen since the early 80s. So for quite a long time, maybe in uh, some people uh, probably don't even remember the early 80s. So you ask yourself, well, can't we just keep on going the way we're going? And what you see in that orange line is if we were to take on the uh, project list and to start replacing our uh, capital uh, assets, and we didn't change our funding, now you see, we would go uh, into the uh, red in 2024, and we would stay there until 49 when you, you start coming up a little bit. So you can see just by this chart, in only two years, we would be without any money in our reserve funding if we were to, to do the projects we have um, in the first two years on the project list. There's a little graphic for you to show you that. So in addition to what we know, um, there are some things that we know are out there. We just don't know how much they might end up costing. And we're looking at those as we're calling those potential threats. And we know they're significant. Currently, they're not captured in this reserve study. And those are the Boundary Ridge stormwater drainage system. We've been working on that, I can tell you, daily um, to come up with some, some solutions there, uh, both temporary and permanent. Um, and all of those will be um, be costly. Great and Harbor bioswale uh, and access. Right now, the guys are down there repairing that bioswale, but that will not be the end to what's going to need to be done to that bioswale. And any other storms in the future are probably going to cause further um, issues with it. Uh, so what's being done down there right now is to make it work and to do what's necessary to make the bioswale function as designed. But there will be future um, repairs and um, access needed, and, and that's going to be an issue. And everybody is probably aware of the Drayton Harbor Recreational Easement. We've been working on that, too. That is a very um, complex problem down there. Uh, so we're going to investigate, evaluate, and address those uh, three items right there. Uh, and those are the known unknowns, and there's probably a couple of unknown unknowns out there as well, but that's something we're working on. These are not captured in the reserve study and in the current um, reserve budget and assessments. So when you look at the reserve study and the 10-year forecast of income and expense, um, I've highlighted the two lines of both um, contributions to reserves and the sort of gold and the total expense. And one of the stories that it tells, as you can tell, there's this increase uh, early on, like we said, those front-loaded years to about 2026. And then you can see the reserves just sort of leveling off and, you know, we're taking care of depreciation. We have some inflation to um, 
to contend with, but nothing major. And we've sort of reached cruising altitude. And you can see the same thing on the expense. You can see expenses go up here and then they sort of just level off at that point. And again, those first years were front loaded, taking care of those deferred maintenance items. And so what does it mean to everybody out there as far as the um, uh, reserve, restricted reserve assessments? And you can see in the first column here, we have 2022 and, uh, per your particular situation or your uh, accessible units, what type of unit you, you live in. Um, and then you see in 2023, you can see this is a 95% increase across the board. Um, what it means monthly to each one of these folks. This is the assessment, the 2023 year assessment just divided by 12. This is what people will be paying each month um, if you like to look at it in that way as opposed to each year. So just in review, the drivers of the 2023 restricted reserve budget. We've got a more accurate reserve study that identifies, again, those three factors in what makes the reserve study go. Uh, we're going to continue to catch up on deferred maintenance. We're going to front load those reserve projects in the first five years. And take home messages, you know, we all recognize that, you know, we're not raising dues here because we want to. We feel it's strongly that it's something that's necessary, we need to do. Um, and, and, and in some ways, if we had a larger reserve right now, meaning we have more money in the bank, we wouldn't have to raise the reserves as much. This is probably something that should have happened earlier. Um, in most communities, that is the case. Semiamu is not um, unique in this way. Um, most, most of the communities out there are facing the same situation. But the other thing, take home message, is that these reserve assessments will not continue to go up at the raise rate that they're proposed this year. They're not going to go up 95% each year. You know, if we see, you know, what we're seeing, again, there's some unknowns out there, but things will level off quickly and you'll be at a, a new level of reserve assessment. Again, these are the board's recommendation and just said, like the operating budget, it's up to the members. Um, is this the budget? That, um, that you will support. And it goes into the packet uh, in a particular way. It goes to the annual meeting and the members get to vote on it. So the board, the board doesn't really get to decide. They just get to decide what goes in the packet. So let's see here. That went pretty quickly. Um, we're going to try to do this. And again, um, I have not done this before, so I'm going to try to get in here and, and get to the raised hands. But before we do so, I just wanted to say we're going to spend about 30 minutes uh, on the capital um, re restricted reserve um, budget and the presentation you've just seen. We're going to open it up for about 30 minutes to discuss the operating budget. Um, and I just want to make sure that everybody is, understands this too. There's a lot of source documents. And if people want to get to drill down, if you really want to get in the weeds on this stuff, I have no problem. We make an appointment, come down here to the office and make sure the source material gets to you. Um, a lot of the stuff is complicated, so it does at times need some additional uh, explanation. So that is an invitation that is open to all. Um, you can email me, phone, you know, make an appointment, come down in person. Um, you know, we are here, and I think probably Jim would say the same thing. You know, we're here to help answer questions and, um, you know, address people's concerns. So I want to make sure that everybody is aware of that. And before we get started with um, the questions, uh, I know Jim wanted to answer a question or maybe a couple of questions that were asked at the last meeting, because these may still be on uh, folks' mind. And, and uh, just to tell you, we've done a little bit of research. Yeah, it's actually one question that was asked by Buzz Abercrombie that we answered big picture, but we promised to come back with more detailed information. And it actually, it actually is relevant to this discussion as well as the operating budget discussion that we had on Saturday. And the question was, where is, you, you know, as you know, the board is proposing that we um, we uh, modify CCNRs to sort of codify um, SRA maintenance responsibilities. This will likely result in additional responsibilities um, over what, what 
is contractually supposed to be done now, and in many cases we're doing it anyhow already. So, but but the question that Buzz asked is if we make this change, um, and SRA has a, a more comprehensive set of responsibilities, where do we see that in the budget? And I think he was also interested in knowing what's the financial impact on the budget. And what we said the other night is that most of the impact would likely be on the capital reserve spending side rather than the operating spending side. But we decided we said that we would get more detail. And David and I met this week and went through both plans. And what we did is we we tried to identify spending items in both the operating plan and the restricted reserve spending plan that either are obviously not. SRA's responsibility or are in a gray area where it's it's honestly unclear whether they are or aren't. And there are a lot of those. And that's one of the reasons why this um, this proposal is being made by the board. And so we identified them and then we quantified them. And, and here's the here's what we found. On the operating budget for 2023, there's less than ten thousand dollars worth of spending that falls into this that's falls into that category. Um, given that the spending plan is a little over a million dollars, that means that it's less than 1% of the operating plan, uh, uh, spending plan. And so it's it's minuscule and, and honestly not real relevant, doesn't, doesn't have an impact. Um, the impact, as we said, is on the capital reserve spending side. And when we looked at this, and we looked at the list as that is being proposed as it is currently structured, and it may change. Some items may be added to the list, which would change this, what I'm reporting to you today. But as it is structured and proposed today, um, it's a little less than $400,000 of spending over the entire 30-year capital spending plan period that we modeled. So that's about 6% of total cumulative spending. And by the way, that is spending uh, in today's dollars. That's not the inflated spending rate that, uh, in, that that increases by inflation assumptions that's in the reserve study. We couldn't get the information out of the reserve study. We could only get it out of the input study that was done by the community and given to the reserve analysts. So that's today's dollars. So again, a little higher impact, certainly, but not but directionally, not, not a major part of the, the spending. And and it that num that number and therefore that percentage could go up if in the end we add additional things to the list of what SRA, SRA will be responsible to maintain. But directionally, I don't think it's ever going to become a in any way, shape, or form a significant portion of that spending budget. So that's the answer to uh, Buzz's question. I see a Mike Kloss has his hand up. Mike, can you want to That's speak? That's right. David, can you hear me okay? Oh, hey, you know what? Um, sorry, but just give me one second. Let's sure. put you on a different speaker here. I didn't okay. realize. Let's try this one. I'll speak a little bit just so you can test your speaker. Can better. you hear me? Better here. Um, and then let's make sure we have the microphone is there too. Okay, great. I, there's so many choices of mics. Okay. That's much okay. better. Okay, go ahead, Mike. Okay, I'm Mike Claus from Simiama Shores. Um, thank you. Um, you know, I think we're all shocked, just like I'm sure everyone around the table was shocked to see such a huge increase in this, um, you know, reserve contribution. And it really, um, it looks to me, I mean, and you pointed out at a very high level, some of the um, problems with the 2020 reserve study. So my questions are really related to that, and I know it's you know in the past, but it's only two years ago. Um, number one is, are we still using that same reserve study expert that we used in 2020? And then number two, how did this group, um, and I mean all the groups that worked on this, all the people that worked on this, how did you look at the lessons learned about the things that we did wrong in 2020? Because I'm sure the reserve study in 2020 was presented to the members as um, competent and reliable and good. So now that we see that it wasn't, how have we learned from that and how have we investigated what we did wrong in 2020? 
Okay, um, I'll answer a portion of that and maybe someone else. I wasn't here, uh, Mike, so um, I, I don't know. And, and it's really difficult to find some of the source documents you know, that, that went into the 2020 reserve study. I've been looking, this is something that um, <laughs> has plagued me since I've arrived here is, is the, the record keeping. I, I don't know where anything is most of the time and no one else seems to. So I can't answer that question. I've been looking, I've asked the reserve. So no, one, no one has really investigated what lessons learned we can learn from 2020. Well, well and here, you, and, and so you asked a question too. I don't, my my own personal opinion on this reserve analyst is it is about as cheap a reserve study as you can get. Their modeling, their presentation is not what I have seen in my experience. So that's number one. Um, I would recommend that we would use someone else um, that has better output. Now the input, most reserve analysts, it, it all depends on what you're paying for. Um, a reserve analyst, many people think you know, the reserve analyst is doing everything. In many cases, what we're doing is handing them, the association is handing them the numbers. They're almost like an auditor. And then they take those and they put it in their model. And you get what comes out is their modeling of, and, uh, of the assessments. Again, the reserve study is to, is to try to determine what the assessments are. And so a lot of times it's what the, it's what the association gives to the reserve analysts. And they have some, you know, wag on some things. They might know a unit cost here or there. So again, I wasn't here. I don't know what that process was, but I can say that I think we can do much better. I think we have done, well, I think we, we did much better as far as identifying again, unit costs, the components, um, all of those things. And so, um, but I, I can't speak to what happened before, um, but I do think we should we should be looking in, in this next year an RFP for um, a, a reserve analyst and, and looking at at, uh, at someone else giving us a better product on the output. Hey, hey, what, I, okay, well, could I just add to that, Arch, sure. and tell me if you would agree or disagree with respect to the twelve million dollars versus this, the four five million dollars of model you know of projected spending over the 30-year period without question the, the most significant impact on that difference is the analysis done internally to capture the that spending plan mm -hmm. and so it isn't the reserve even though we might be able to choose a better reserve analyst it isn't the work that the reserve analyst did that may have been flawed that resulted in that difference it's the inputs that were provided yeah. And the difference in 2022 versus 2020 is a much more comprehensive effort in 2022 to get that those inputs right. And That's, we just have to acknowledge that. That's the biggest impact. Would, would you agree with that? Or? As, as far yeah. as I can tell, yeah. That's yeah what I, and I'll just go back to when we did our town halls last year, the reserve study was a real issue amongst everybody because the, the general... Uh, feeling was that it was just a piece of garbage that the the price per square foot for paving the amount of paving uh just everything that was put into it was not generated like we did this year where we we got our maintenance team together we inspected things we got um um <clears throat> dave whitmore was involved in in helping we had some uh contractors that were involved in bringing pricing together i mean it was a very comprehensive approach to making sure that the reserve study this year is based on solid ground and i think we have something uh to really work from uh, you know, and the reserve study is really critical because it's really our it's really our savings account for future problems, uh, so that we don't have to go out and and do special assessments on an annual basis or every other year or whenever things come up. We want to make sure that we've got the reserves put aside to be able to do that effectively. So, I would just add in, in, on the issue of lessons learned. Uh, we don't have a paper per se where we've drafted what the lessons are, but we understood that that level of analysis and detail uh, was not done in the previous study. And therefore, the product, the outcome of that exercise was 
inadequate and and, and probably did not rec represent reality. Well, and two, uh, uh, you know, we're speaking from a spectator's position because nobody in this room Correct. was involved in in that putting that reserve study together. Yeah. And I, I can say too, my I was looking uh, historically again, at least digitally. I haven't found anything previous to 2019 as a reserve study, and I, I would assume that Semion had reserve studies for many years, but I <laughs> I haven't found them anyway. So um, that it, it's it's hard to sort of draw a uh, historical arc of what has been happening, and so but I, but as and Jim and I mentioned, we know that what we have now, I, got, I can't speak for anything in the past, but what we have now is very thorough and it's very accurate. And I think this is as good a reserve study as Semiyama's probably ever had. So thank you for your question, Mike. And let's see who else do we have here. Um, Joe Sothi. Gentlemen and everyone, uh, thank you very much. Um, I wanted to comment on Mike's comment. So at the 2020 AGM, prior to it, when I received the budget, I also, uh, because I was on the preliminary finance committee at that time, asked the question about the inputs going into the reserve study. The gentlemen in the room have been very nice in their comments. The only, the comment that is dead accurate um, that was stated by Doug is that the inputs used in the 2020 budget were told to me specifically were garbage. And some of them were up to 10 years old at that time. To, to okay. that point, probably the biggest input for the reserves in our community, um, which is roads, uh, were anywhere from five to 10 times understated the reality of what it would cost in 2020 to actually pave the roads if we needed to pave them at that time, never mind the projected costs for a number of years in advance. So I'm, I'm very, very happy that the reserve study has been updated to what appears to be a significant amount closer to reality of the situation that we're going to be in whenever we have to replace a lot of our assets because it's needed. And that's the reason why we didn't do it last year when I did happen to be on the board, we didn't have enough time to try and figure out how to get the input costs from contractors who would be able to tell us what it costs for miles of road and drainage ditches and everything associated with um, our infrastructure in Semiamu. Thank you. Thanks, Joe. Yeah. Thanks, Joe. Thanks for the history, Joe. I appreciate it. Okay, let's see. Who I think is. just to add to Joe's comment, I don't think we had... Um, adequate staffing at the time either that, that had a good enough handle on what our assets were. Sure, is that Jen? Um, Mark German? I'm gonna- Yes, yes, okay. thank you. Uh, Mark German, 9103, uh, Bintail Luke. Uh, not questioning uh, the validity of the uh, projected reserve budget and look back but don't stare but have we done uh projections over five years or ten years what we anticipate the monthly or annual burden to the owners for the reserve fund and also for the operating budget now i realize you can't go that far out for that but you know at the end of the day what do we see the owners facing as far as increase increases for both the budgets over the next uh, three to five years? If I can, I can show that to you. Yeah. Right. The Thank answer you. to your question is we've done both. This year we did a 10 year long range plan to look at operating expenses and reserve expenses. And of course the reserve study models those those spending rates are reflected in the reserve study with respect to capital spending. So we did do that and we presented that the uh, on Saturday night, but we're it's real simple to put the slide up and show it to you again. So that's what that's what it looks like, uh, Mark, um, over the 10 years. 
And similar to what we said before, you see sort of a steep rise and then a leveling off um, and just sort of kind of keeping up with inflation at that point, um, both in operating and in, in the capital um, side. And you can see some of our assumptions there, 7.5% inflation and you know for the first next two years or so, and then back down to three. And we'll update this. We had a discussion on Saturday about what the appropriate uh, interest rates are, uh, or excuse me, inflation rates to be putting in here. And you know, consumer price index and uh, and then capital uh, and uh, construction indices are different. And so we're, we're doing our best here. We went to our finance committee and said, "What does this does this make sense?" And, and so we'll, we'll we'll update this, but I think this is a pretty good place to to start for yourself and and other members out there that are kind of wondering, well, what's it look like in you know five years or ten years? So this is our best uh, attempt to date, anyway, to do that, and we will continue to refine this model and update it as we go along. Thank you, and I think one final question or suggestion: Should we not have on here the number? Uh, of participants, if you will, or owners, how that has increased from, uh, let's say, 21, 22, and what is projected going forward? Yeah, that, you know, our, our model didn't get that sophisticated. We do in the assessments try to predict in this next operating year, how many accessible units we're going to have. But that's, that is a, a good point that we can see how we can introduce that into the model that we've done because it really is basically, this model is like steady, steady state. If no more homes were built, if, if the accessible units stayed the same, but that's something that Jim and I will be working on in the off season and maybe with the finance committee. Um, it, it, it's been a, a you know, the, we didn't have this model even until just right, a, guys, a month or so fun. ago. So uh, we'll continue well, to refine it. But that's a that's a great suggestion, uh, and it would make a it make a big difference. So thank you for that. Thank you. So let me see here. So we should go back to the uh, Let's go here. Okay, let me get back to see who else is out there with their hand up. Just give me a moment here. Um, Looks like we have Steve Haynes that would like to ask a question. Anybody know who Steve Haynes is? Um, thanks, David. I, I actually wanted primarily to uh, support Joe Southey's story about the history of uh, the reserve and the and the uh, deferred maintenance. I was on the board. At, Actually, before before Joe and I, I did hear and participate in the development of the last reserve study, but I heard about it, and um, the words he used to describe it uh, were used and are correct. Uh, it was our, we were told that there are several levels of reserve study. You don't do one as comprehensive as the 2022 every year. Correct. You date the previous ones. And so the 2020 reserve study was just an update of previous reserve studies, which had equally inadequate inputs. And secondly, uh, it was felt that the provider of that reserve study was not uh, doing the best job possible. And the new reserve study uh, is of a much higher quality um, in, in the way it was put together in addition to the inputs. I think the most important thing about the, the required increase in the reserve assessments is that this community for many years has been inadequately funding its reserve fund. And that, I mean, it, it, it's all of us have accepted that. And we have accepted the deferral of necessary maintenance to the point where we see like that we have gates that fail every week and, and that sort of thing. And the, reserve, the increase in the reserve 
fund is necessary to take to catch up on that that deferred maintenance and to put us in a position as has been said so that we have enough funds barring highly unusual circumstances to do proper maintenance going forward so that we don't have huge special assessments unless something un totally unexpected and, or unexplainable happens. And this is an unfortunate result of a long-term policy of this community, all of us, to underfund the reserve study and we need to fix that. Great, thank you for your comments, Steve. Let's see, do we have anybody else that's out there that wants to talk about uh, restricted reserve and the assessments in the reserve study? Let me see, wrong one, here we go. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a hand thing, oh, there it goes. There's Dave Whitmore. Hi, Dave. Yeah, I just want to make a couple comments. Um, one was when you use the term deferred, there are some things that are deferred, like gates and posts and, and uh, those kinds of things. But I think the, the organization or, or the residents need to understand that Semiamu started in 1985 when roads were built. And a lot of the infrastructure was built between 1985 and 19, early 90s. So, all of our major infrastructure, like the roads, are 30 you know, plus years. Boundary Ridge was the first organization and they just had some roads repaved for 37 years. So if you make some assumptions about um, the life, it's, it's not just deferred maintenance, it is time to start replacing or, or uh, you know, rebuilding some things that are over 30 years old, like the roads. And uh, if you can do some maintenance on it, we can defer some of those expenses. But I'm just saying that there are, are things that are wearing out that are due to be replaced or, or fixed just because of their age, not because we deferred maintenance. Um, the second point I wanted to make was um, in putting the reserve study together, uh, we worked with Dan on making some assumptions about what things cost. And the advantage to that is that we can test those over time. And as, as real costs start coming in to fix things, we can bounce those that would help improve the future reserve budgets and the way we do things. And so uh, I think people need to be aware of that. that all of the costs are based on certain assumptions that can be tested over time. Mm -hmm. And, and, and Dave, I can give you an example of that is the work that you, Dan, were doing on how often the road is traveled. Is it heavy, light, right. or medium traffic? And then you make some assumptions as to that replacement cycle again. If it's heavy traffic, it gets replaced sooner than those that don't have much traffic at all. And that, that's, that's some of the things I think, an example of us testing some of the assumptions and we'll yeah. see how that works out. Yeah, we may find a heavy tra uh, light traffic road wears out the same as a heavy traffic road and right. may have to revise the dollars based on that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so Dave, I'd just like to say thank you to, uh, and, and the community needs to know how valuable your contribution has been this year for us. And, and uh, the entire board really appreciates what you've done. So thank you very much. Absolutely. Yeah, well, you're welcome. It was, it was a fun project. And we got some more work to do. Next year, uh, I'll be working with Dan on sewer pipes, which is another issue. People, the other thing people need to realize that things that are more than a 30-year life from today are not included in the budget which means that if you have an asset that lasts more than over 60 years now, it's not, it may not be in the budget. And sewer pipes might need to be in the budget if they last less than 60 years. So we'll, we'll see how it works out when you're looking at 30 year horizon. So next year we'll be working on sewer pipes.
And and when Dave's mentioned sewer pipes, he's saying he's he's meaning storm sewer. Storm, so the storm, storm sewer. I'm sorry, storm. Yeah, people are not not <laughs> sewage pipes, blame sewage. I'm talking about yeah, storm yeah, sewer you're... pipes. Yeah, storm you're drainage saying, pipes is maybe a better term. I had to worry about that in Shelter Bay. And it's it's not a good thing. It was fifty. This, those pipes were fifty years old. It kept me up. To but night. they're still they're still in underneath the road and their yep. pipes. So. And and I, I appreciate you bringing that up, Dave. One of the things, and that's that's a, a really good point that I missed, was in the next five years we will have reached that period of time in which the stormwater piping and catchments will actually enter into the reserve study. It'll be a, you know, a small amount, but it will continue to grow. So that those components will enter the reserve study probably in the next five years or so. Yeah, we might not want to start understanding what it costs 10 years from now so, so we can build a reserve to pay for that because it's gonna be expensive. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Just a, just a piece of good news as it relates to that, because this talk can be a little bit alarming. Um, we just surveyed the inside of the Boundary Ridge Storm sewer system, which is the oldest here, and uh, it was in good shape. So good. Um, there's no sagging, there's no blockages, there's no big cracks. This, the system is in, in good shape, so um, it should last for a while. Yeah, that's good news, and we won't know until something breaks, and then we can figure out <laughs> what's going to happen in the next 30 years from there. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. Thanks for your comments, Dave. Yeah, no problem. Let's see, we've got Gordon Smith. Gordon, good evening. Ask to unmute. Gordon, are you out there? Yeah, I'm out here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, I live in uh, Marin, Building B. Uh, I'm not going to get into a discussion about equity or inequity. Uh, I'm just, I was kind of surprised at your comment at the very outset of the meeting saying you'd have gotten very little feedback um, uh, because the few people that I've talked to, uh, when they saw a 40% increase, they were pretty shocked, and I'm pretty shocked. Um, I haven't had enough time to go into details to see where it could be cut, but I have to believe that a 40% increase is kind of unreasonable. And I think that's the um, the operating budget, Gordon. Is, is that what you're referring to? We, well, yeah, it's both, total, obviously. Total, uh, total, total assessments. Okay. Primarily yeah. the operating budget, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, yeah, interesting enough, I know people have asked me, so I've gotten a lot in, in my inbox, and I've actually not received um, any um, questions or concerns from members yet in my email uh, box. I don't know if that's, um, well, if people are missing that or what, but it's gm at srahoa.com. And, and I'd add to that, we had a town hall meeting on the operating budget Saturday night and the total assessment was presented and we had a long Q&A session and not once during that community session did a community member express the sentiment that you just did. So, And, and I realized that and I didn't speak up then. Uh, okay. Shame on me. I'm but... just saying it's, it hasn't <laughs> been the predominant, it, it's been absent and it certainly hasn't been the predominant Feedback doesn't mean that that sentiment doesn't exist out there, and there are other there are going to be other options for uh, opportunities for people to express. Yeah, I'm just I'm just concerned that there's going to be, you know, some groundswell later on that's that's going to come up, or maybe well, I think maybe we'd like. Go ahead, Gordon. And I, and I wanted to add something too, Gordon. Is we really need that feedback? I, I, you know, we have another meeting on the six. 13th, 13th, sorry, 13th. And so we're putting this out there so we can get some feedback from people, whether it's just answering questions or if you want to, you know, take a look at that budget and see, like you said, where can we cut and just, you know, please provide some, you know, some feedback to us and we bring that to the board. And, and if there's questions about certain line items, why they're moving the way they are or what they are, what they include and stuff, um, Shoot that over because understanding the budget is really important for all of us. 
And, you know, we didn't throw a 40% increase out there just because we like to spend money because we all have to pay it. It's, it's really a function of looking at some of the real critical needs we've got in the community um, and how we're going to deal with them. So that's the point. And if, if there's questions, let's, let's get to the bottom of them. Okay, I will try to do that before the 13th. And did you have a question, uh, Gordon, other than that? I thought you were, I'm nope. sorry I interrupted you. And... No, no. No, nope, that was it. Okay. Thanks, Gordon. Great. Thank you. Okay, let's see. We have Stan Magritta. Magretta? Yes. Uh, yes. Can you hear me? Just barely, Stan. Can you speak up a little bit? You're a little muted. Okay, I just got a quick question on the... Uh... The walking and bike path along Semiamu Parkway, as well as Drayton Harbor Road. I don't know if any of you have taken a bike ride on there. It's becoming quite uh, in disrepair. My question is, who's responsible for that? Is that the city of Blaine? Or is it- Yes, it is, unfortunately. Well, I guess, yes, it is. It is in their right of way, but that doesn't mean we can't have some discussions with the city about its condition and, and its upkeep. Okay, thank you. Thank you for your question. I know that, and I appreciate that question because um, I get that one a lot. And, um, you know, many people just think that it's, it's Semiyama's responsibility and then they automatically think that we're not, we're not keeping up on that, but it really is, it's a city of blame function. Let's see. Um, anybody else out there with a question? Either on the, if we don't have any more questions about capital, we can move to the operating budget. Let's see. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, I'm not sure how you get your hand up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, Kurt. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. Thank you. Um, am I on? Yeah, yeah, you are. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry. I joined the meeting a little bit late, so I didn't see a line by line uh, item list about what money is being spent on in 2023. Uh, my question had to do with uh, the Drayton Harbor easement on that trail along there. Uh, is there money in the budget for 2023 to? reopen that trail we do have and this is was in the reserve study we have twenty thousand dollars in the reserve budget um, for that i believe it's in 2024 um dave might be looking through that right now i just remember seeing that i mean i think that's not an, a, a realistic number and kurt here's one of the issues with that this is why this is really complicated is because of SRA has a maintenance easement over a 20 foot from the center line of old Drayton Harbor Road. And all of the issues that are related to that slide to the shoreline are all outside of that easement and they are on private property. So if you have an opportunity and you walk down there and you look to the um, shore side, you'll see that the old road is being undermined. In some places, it's concave. And that, to fix the shoreline, to be able to stabilize that bank is extremely time-consuming with permitting, with agencies, and it's very costly. I did some of this work at Shelter Bay right before I came here. And it is two years, three years in permitting, and we were looking at a $1,000 a linear foot. Um, for mitigation and just construction costs. Then on the other, so that's not even an SRA's, that's outside of SRA's 20 foot responsibility. It, that is on private property. All the private property owners own down to the mean high water. Then if you go on the other side of the path, now that's all private property as well. And that's where the slides are coming from. And so we, if that's on private property, so to mitigate that or to try to, to deal with the uh, hundreds of yards of trees and debris that have come down on the pathway from an area outside of SRA's responsibility is, again, another tricky issue because it's on private property. 
So but to, to try to answer your question from a big picture perspective, there is money in the in the operating budget to gather information. Yes. And study and use consultants to give us input and, and investigate permitting requirements, et cetera. But if you're asking, is there is there money in either budget, and it would probably be more likely to be in the, in the reserve budget, to absolutely correct, shore up, restore that to a pristine walking path, the answer is absolutely not. There's not. And we've been clear about that from the very beginning. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark, your hands up again. I don't know if you yes, know. thank you. Uh, and it relates to uh, the same uh, matter. First of all, are we bound to maintain that for as a public uh, access or walking path? And I realize there is historical significance. There's, uh, you know, the natural beauty of the region, but it is used to be used by many people other than the residents. So I, I just wonder, are we able to relieve ourselves of this long-term financial responsibility? That is, we would have to approach the city, in my understanding, and uh, petition to uh, amend the semi master plan. And so to relieve ourselves of that liability. Also, also waiting on um, the guidance from the Department of Ecology. There's some new rules out there that they are implementing. I've met with a consultant about that. And what the Department of Ecology is wanting are those trees and what's happened there, that big slide. They want that to happen on high bluffs throughout Puget Sound to add more organic matter to, to the bluffs here want to do that. Our ecology wants them to do that. The question is, can we do that and maintain the path? Can we take the trees that are there and put those as soft armoring along the bank? We're waiting to see. That's that, that could be a little while before we know the answer to that. That's Thank you. Well, thanks for your question. Let's see, Joe, you have your hand up again. I do. So this is regarding the operating budget. I should have said it the last, uh, when I was up last time, I live in Royal Troon. I've been in the community for almost 17 years and I was on the board for better part of the last year and a bit until a few months ago. So on the operating budget at the last board meeting, the one being a financial professional all my life, I've always seen a comparative budget for the next year against the actual spending uh, that and estimated spending for the rest of the year for the current year. And in the operating budget, um, I didn't get a chance to say that because I didn't know how it was going to be presented on Saturday, uh, that never occurred. So what I would like to see going forward is a comparison for the 2023 budget on a line item basis to the 2022 estimate for the year. The one thing I'm very aware of based on the last board meeting is that the SRA has been spending very little money of the landscaping and other contracted services money that we promised the community we were going to spend to beautify the community. Um, and the comparison to 2022 that was shown on Saturday is nowhere near the reality of what it should be on certain line items. What I do remember, because I did the comparison at the last board meeting, is that the 2023 budget over the 2022 estimate spending for the year that was presented at the last board meeting is about 38% higher. So it doesn't show an accurate representation currently in the way it was presented on Saturday and so if you want to do it against the budget, please go ahead, but I want you to do it against the estimated spending for the year as well in order to keep uh, residents more informed. Thank you. Joe, as you know, the forecast changes as we get more information. So that means updating that comparison every month. So what you saw at the board meeting may not be what you see two months from now at that point. I'm very so, aware that. Appreciate your input, though. 
I'm very and we'll, be, we'll do that. Thank you. Be, being a finance professional all my life, that's all I've done. I'm very aware that an estimate is an estimate to the end of the year. Oh. If it needs to change, it needs to change. Okay. We will do that. Thank you again, Joe. Let's see, who else do we have out there? Uh, anybody else have any questions? I see we have uh, 20 some of you on there. Some of you are very quiet. Let's see. Chat, let's see. I'm not sure who Chateau Christie is, but Chateau Christie has a question. Uh, hello? Hello, this is Dick Christie. I'm down at Semiamo Shore. And I've got a couple of comments and a couple of questions. Um, is it possible to get a breakout of the budget regarding roads, paths, and parks on the repair and maintenance? And is it also possible to see the list of the deferred maintenance items and what the when the reserve study disclosure document will be available? I'm just interested in seeing what all of those individual light items are. Uh, the deferred maintenance, like the reserve study in that input, yeah, I mean, we, we have what our project plans are going to be for the next you know, few years. Um, you know, I could mark those as what we might think is deferred. Um, as Dave Whitmore was mentioning, some of this is really just replacement. Um, some of the gates, as Steve Haynes mentioned, you know, some of the things we've been probably are, are past their useful life. So I can take a, I can show you the reserve study, and I believe that's online. It um, is online. Can, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll look for it, and I can go through that. The, the reserve study has thirty years worth of project spending, although it's not designed to be the definitive spending document, but it certainly reflects it and the various categories of spending, so gates and paving, and that's broken out, and the numbers for each year over the next 30 years are in that reserve study. So you might wanna start there. That will certainly give you some, some directional understanding of, of how things are breaking out, what the different categories are, and how much is being projected over the next 30 years. Okay, the, the reason why I asked about the breakout of the roads paths and parks. Um, I noticed that you guys uh, last Saturday and again tonight on an accomplishment are listing the Sire and Rex Park updates. Um, the parks are beautiful, no question about it. Um, I came from Woodenville and the city of Woodenville many years ago spent over $1 million to update their little park uh, $200,000 was spent on consulting fees for what that park update should look like. And it turned out to be a beautiful park, but just as we found there, as I see up the hill, um, because we ride our bikes through the neighborhoods uh, two or three times a week to look at the diversity of the landscape, which is fun, the new construction, which is interesting, but we never see anyone at the parks except for the mallard ducks at Rex Park. And I'm not trying to be a smart Nick about it. It's just the fact that when you wanna do updates, I sure hope there's a survey that's done that lists the value added for spending the money to update these parks. And we're up there two, three times a week. And I feel like we need to park our bikes and sit there because we never see anyone there. Now, Compared to that, down here on Semiamu, before you come to Semiamu Shore, there's a little park on Drayton Harbor, and that place now is busy most times of the day. We're struggling to get a vendor to paint, repaint the parking lot for us. We maintain the park itself because we own it. We're thankful for the SRA for emptying the trash and taking care of the dog bins that are there provided for the public. But here again, you know, this is this is, just an, this is just another one of those things that that we are we spend our money and we and we contribute to the community. But I don't know how you do a survey 
to say that funds should be spent for these other parks when we absolutely just don't ever see one anyone using it. That's just a point, just a comment. I don't want to upset the apple cart, but the fact is, if you're up there two, three times a week and you only see the SRA maintenance folks trimming or mowing, um, I, I just hope that there's some value added when you guys decide to update various common areas for the whole community that it's worth, it's worth the funds that you're putting into it and the resources. That's it. Thank you. Those are good comments. Absolutely. Thank you, Dick. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see, what else do we have here? Okay. Uh, Mark, do you have your hand up again? Yes, I do. Apologizing okay. for being a woodpecker. Uh, this is uh, relative to Joe's comments. My background is building and managing themed resorts. And, uh, and maybe it's in the documents, and I apologize if it's accessible. I have not seen it. But I have always had actual year-to-date and projections for the remainder of the year. And I, th I think this is really important because we approved, approved the budget for 2022. The 2023 budget is based on that, plus uh, determining what our expenses and needs will be. But I'd like to see this bridge between what are the projected actuals and what is the proposed. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for your comments. Uh, let's see here. So th that was the same question Joe asked. Joe asked that. Right. So we can we can do that, correct? Yeah. yeah. Well, and we're we're trying to do that with each month in our board packet. I think Joe was saying it's just as far as the annual meeting packet in the budget is yeah. to be able to show the comparison. It's in the board packet every month. Yeah. yeah. So we and same when you present plans. It, compare them to last year's plan, also compare them to this year's forecasted year in spending. So yeah, and so instead of just having in any detail in this this particular slide, so you have the 2022 plan, the 2023 plan, what it's saying is having the 2022 Two estimate or forecast for the year to date end. Right in which is is, is correct. Uh, yeah. And that we can when we can yeah. do that. And, and 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 again with that, you know, Disclaimer that you know uh, these things are subject to change, and especially with this fall coming up. So that well, that's yeah, no, the word that's... projected. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the word. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much, Mark. Okay. Does anybody else have any questions uh, for us? And and again, I, I want to stress that you know I really felt as though I would have a bunch of emails in my email box and questions about the budget. And um, I haven't gotten a single one. So um, I feel like the main tag repairman, just send that stuff in to me if you would, um, or to the board members as well. Send, send comments to Jim or questions. Um, it really does. The best budget is one that's made with the community input. That's why we're doing this. Uh, that's why we have another uh, a community meeting lined up for the 13th at six o'clock. And I... I am curious. So I tried this evening uh, to, um, oh, I'm going to launch this. Oh, wow. Look at that. So you learn something every day. I'm just kind of curious out there. And there was a lot of debate within the board of when should we have these meetings? And so we tried Saturday at two o'clock. We thought, you know, we want to make sure that that's a time that people are probably available. And then we learned that that was a time when there was a golf tournament on uh, here at Semiyama. We thought tonight would be a good uh, night because uh, it's after hours, allow people who work to attend. Uh, we also have a board policy that we may want to adjust as far as having two town hall meetings in August. I think there's no reason why we couldn't have had one next week. Um, and, that, and we did, did, did schedule another. But anyways, if, if people might be willing to, to take a, a minute and just give us, provide us feedback, and maybe we'll do this more often, is when we have questions, when the board and the manager has questions and we have 50 or 25 or 30 people on a call, that maybe um, you can do us a favor and just answer some of these but questions. Can we just, instead of there's only 20 some on the, can we do this to the, just send it out to the community? 
we could. I just thought this was just something I was oh, playing with. You know, kind of yeah, I just I just had this. So I was like, oh, I wonder if we could do this because it was a, something that, oh, and see, look at that. And we can see what people are voting on. That is cool. <laughs> I like stuff like that. Look, the weekend seems to be pretty popular at this point. So, yeah, anyways, this was a, um, a quite a bit of discussion went into it. And we knew we couldn't get it perfect. But, uh, you know, this next year, we'll, we'll endeavor to make sure that I think the process will start a little earlier. Again, you know, we had a brand new manager, we had a brand new maintenance director, we had a brand new treasurer. And uh, so I think next year will be a, a smoother process all the way uh, along and be much better prepared, I think, um, for uh, for August in 2023 than we were in 2022. So is there any other questions that people might have out there? Thank you very much. Well, we appreciate yeah. everybody participating. We appreciate the, the uh, comments, the questions, the suggestions. Uh, keep them coming. We want to get this budget to final uh, for our next board meeting, which is, uh, what is it, uh, 20, September 21st. 21st of September. So let's, if, if there's anything, any suggestions, make sure that we get them because we want to have a budget that people at this time next year are going to look back on and say, that was a good process. Let's do that again. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for attending this evening. Please send your comments and your questions. <laughs>